Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, sometimes there's no easy answers. And so this is a video I'm going to talk about where there's not really an easy answer. I want to continue the magic discussion. I've really enjoyed the responses I've gotten to some of the videos I made because I started just kind of gushing about the VAM system that came out from Lamentations of the Flame Princess. This video is not really about that. I enjoyed the video that uh, Dark Age of Roleplay Games made recently, uh, the, uh, the kind of like response to mine, which was really cool. It raised a lot of really good points about design and, and you know, the, you know, how magic came to be in games and what it kind of represented. So I want to continue that discussion because it's something that's really near and dear to my heart. And you know, when I say there's no easy answers, I, I like to equate this some uh, magic to like something like political science. And if you've ever taken a political science class, you've ever thought about it, you've ever, ever done some reading and hopefully some thinking about it, you come away with the realization that there's just no easy answers. Maybe you stepped into it thinking there might have been, but you, you end up with these questions like, you know, what should the rules be? Who gets to make those rules and says who? And it seems like that should be easy to answer. And then you realize it's really not. And so I, this video is not going to be about political science. And I'm going to step away from that hornet's nest just as fast as I just poked it. So that's the end of that discussion. But magic, it's kind of the same way. You know, we play role playing games and it's really easy for us to conceptualize of doing things like getting into hand to hand combat or driving a car through a, a busy city uh, block. Or, or you know, a series of blocks, you know, and, and getting away from somebody, or conceptualize, you know, uh, doing something technical, or shooting a gun, or sneaking around. I assure you, I am not good at any of those things, but I can kind of conceptualize that. I have a frame of reference. People can actually do these things. You can codify in game rules how to represent things like automobiles, or tanks, or you know, helicopter fights. Yeah, the list goes on and on. These are things that actually really exist in the real world that we can conceptualize, we can we can analyze, we can draw on data, and you can make the game really, really abstract if you're a designer, and I tend to like a little bit more abstract representation, or you can make it really, really technical and really, really crunchy, for lack of a better word. But we have a frame of reference for all that, and it's really tough to equate something like magic, and I'm going to throw everything under that umbrella. You know, that's just bizarre stuff that we can't do so i'm talking about like psionics or the meridians and broken rooms or you know pretty much cool psychic or magical powers all that mystical stuff stuff that you know we really can't do it doesn't really exist <laughs> okay so that's a little tougher you know how do we represent that how do we represent that fairly should we represent that fairly you know what kind of feel do we want to you know go for when we have something like magic in our games and, you know, I made a video a long, long time ago, I think closer to the first year or so of my channel, talking about game balance and the classes. It turned out to be a really popular video. But, uh, you know, I talked about the idea that, you know, it's you just can't compare apples to apples at that point. You know, I might, I might have said you're kind of comparing apples to oranges, but really kind of you're comparing, comparing like apples to calamari. You're talking about, you know, being a fighter or being a you know, warrior or being somebody that does mundane things. You know, even if he does them really well and he's spectacular at them versus the guy that can twip twist and, and bend and warp reality just how do you how do you mechanically represent that in a way that's fair or something else and you know people are funny i'm not really poking fun at anybody in particular and trust me i've had these thoughts myself but it's funny as as i uh you talked about the 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 vam magic system you know from lamentations of the flame princess and this video is really not about that but as I'm talking about that, it's funny, you get some reactions to people like, you know, hey, if, if you allow people access to all these really powerful spells at the beginning, at first level, that's going to break the game. You can't do that because, you know, then it'll make uh, non-magic characters kind of completely irrelevant. You can't do that. And then by the same token, you're talking about, okay, well, there are these uh, uh, punishments, not punishments, that's the wrong word, but these checks in place. The punishments were the word that people ended up using. But there's checks in place, okay, in that particular system, you know, after you go past your, your free spells, then there's a lot of risk involved and very, very bad things can happen to you or the people around you. You can warp and bend reality in ways that you really didn't want to. And instantly you get the reaction, hey, you can't do that. That's not fair. You're punishing somebody for, for using magic. That's not cool. <laughs> it's the same. You know, you get the idea. No matter what you do, you know, people just, you know, yelling, you can't do that. And I understand. I Trust me, I had these gut level reactions myself as I'm looking at that system and, and as other systems. And I kind of have to wrap my head around it. You know, for me, you know, I kind of have to take a step back and, and think about, like, what's my intent? Like, why, uh, as a player, and let's say as a game designer, as, as somebody going and we're going to go play a role-playing game, what shall we play? What's our intent for introducing magic or something like it into the game world in the first place? Now, first of all, it's easy. It's cool. I mean, I wouldn't be here if I didn't like that kind of stuff. But, you know, what do we want the feel of that magic to be? 
you know, I've really enjoyed looking at systems, you know, for a long time before this particular one came out, where you know, magic is represented as being very, very powerful, very, very unstable, you know, really dangerous. Something that really kind of, you know, mirrors a lot of the stories I've liked, whether it's movies or more more books, where it's something that, you know, the, the magic user is just coming to grips with, like, how do I control this? It can do some phenomenally powerful things. But, you know, how, how do I actually get a handle on this? And so every once in a while they can do something really spectacular and great, but they have to be careful. It can change them, it can warp them. Perhaps, you know, they can kind of start to break reality around them without even uh, meaning to do so. And something like Broken Rooms calls that frame dragging. The more distance you accumulate, the more you just start to warp reality around you without even really meaning to do that. I like that vibe an awful lot. I also conversely like the vibe, you know, that, you know, Jason talked about, I've talked about before in my videos, uh, you know, at length, the idea that maybe magic users or whatever they, were, whatever they happen to be, psychic people, maybe they can just do stuff. Maybe there's certain things they're just able to do that aren't terribly consequential, but just it's kind of magic-y. It makes them feel more magic. Once again, it kind of goes back to like, what's your intention as a game designer, as a game player? What kind of experience do you want to have? You know, James, uh, Edward Raji IV actually made some great um, observations, and he's not the first one to make it. I mean, J uh, Jason talked about the same kind of thing, that originally the Vansley and Magic system that they placed in D&D &D was a great solution to the problem they had. Like, how do, I, how do I balance this with what the fighter does and everything else? It's just this codified economy they had in that original game. But then it, you know, went on from being just that codified economy to, like, you know, now it has to be in counterbalance. And... You know, what if, you know, Jason kind of mentioned a little bit, like, what if the game had been uh, developed a little bit differently and it was more about effects rather than, you know, combat or rather, you know, you know what I kind of relate it to every once in a while, like where magic starts to become boring for me. And trust me, I'm not bashing the old school games. I mean, it's me. But where it starts to become boring for me is uh, when magic becomes kind of like smart bombs. You know, it's just another tool in your toolkit and you pull out this magic spell or ability you have and it's just to solve a problem. And, you know, I'm really dating myself here, but way back before Xbox and all that kind of cool stuff, we had these arcades and, you know, you play these stand-up machines and you, you play a game called Defender every once in a while. A really hard game, but uh, you had three smart bombs. And so if things went, got really bad, you could sit there and hit that smart bomb button and all the bad guys on the screen just blew up and you, you could take a breather because you were just about to die. And that's sometimes how I view, like, we, we use magic or spells or whatever it happens to be in these games, where it's the smart bomb. Oh, we're, we're faced with, you know, problem X. I'm going to pull out trick Y. Boom. And, okay, that's solved. And that becomes, you know, it's fun for a while, but then it becomes boring to me. And so I found that I wanted more from my magical experience. <laughs> that sounds crazy, doesn't it? I wanted more from my magical experience. I, I like the idea of, of magic being much more accessible to the you know the cast or whatever it is I, mean, I love something like in the in regime diabolique or uh in um desolation where you can call upon some pretty strong magic but there are some penalties there's burn you could kill yourself potentially in, in desolation there's the inquisition you know the the uh the checks and balances for something like magic, even in like Lamentations of the Flame Princess, it doesn't necessarily just have to be that you can have these terrible, you know, uh, effects happen to you if you miscast. You know, ditto for something like Dungeon Crawl Classics, which has a pretty brutal system of, of uh, you know, being corrupted. How about just the fact that, you know, when you start doing that kind of thing, if you if you play in a, a certain type of scenario or genre, you know, people are scared of you. Talked about, the, you know, in, in James's uh, little uh, supplement there that, you know, people will get scared if they know that somebody's a magic user. What do people do when they're scared? They get the torches and the pitchforks. <laughs> they go get that guy and they go burn him at the stake or whatever they do. You know, I don't want to find out if, you know, but you get the idea. I like that. I like the fact that you should have, you know, a big risk, big reward. And, you know, maybe taking a lot of the shackles off of the magic system that we put on there and you know, making it very codified and, and for a particular reason, it just becomes like your smart bombs. Okay, you know, the idea of like, making magic much more freeform. I love that. But there's a cost. So things could go wrong. You could be persecuted. I find that fits in really, really well with the the um, the stories I liked. The reason I kind of got into this whole role playing in the first place, you know, it, it was really cool every once in a while to read a book or something where the, the wizard did all these wizardy things and it was great and he always won. And when when he when he did this and pointed his wand here, his enemies blew up. That's great, but that's kind of like Saturday morning cartoons. I find it is much more cool, you know, when there's there's cost, you know, something like you know. Uh, probably a bad example, but Thomas Common of the Unbeliever. Great stuff. You, you could do some really cool stuff every once in a while. But um, 
it's half the time he had no clue what he was doing. There's some other great books in there. I, I can't remember the name of the series. I love the series. I read it about it ten years ago. Where you know it's it's a well used trope where the the person that had the the magical ability, they you know over time, were able to develop it. And but they had times that it just simply didn't work for them. There were times when like they almost like you know collapsed reality, and they had to be taught like this is what you don't do. This is really really dangerous. You gotta like you know he's back here a little bit, fella. But there was times when they were able to actually, you know, uh, um, alter events in a really grand and meaningful way. So, yeah, this is kind of a remedy video. It's not just about, you know, in defense of doing something different. It's just kind of like more like, you know, what do I want? Uh, or, you know, what do I want magic to feel like? And that's a question you kind of have to answer for yourself. If you're playing a game, designing a game, what, you know, what do you want this to actually do? What's your intent? And then how do you get there? There are more than one ways to skin a cat. And I, I don't believe there's any real good, easy answer at the end of the day. You can do all the things you want to with mechanics, but at some point also you have to sit down as a group of players and determine like what kind of feel are we going for. Yes, I think the system is going to provide us this kind of feel for the most part, but how are we going to play it? You know, what are what are we going to use as uh, you know, constraints, and what are we you know where are we going to loosen things up? You know, so I'm not sure if any of that made sense to you, but it's it, to me it's it's a big, giant, very interesting and compelling topic. Because it's part of what makes role-playing games really, really interesting to me. Yes, I like all the uh, the in-character development. I like some hack and slash. I like some adventure. I like some, you know, swing on ropes and swashbuckling and all that kind of good stuff. But I like the weird. I like the phenomenal cosmic power. I, I like the the scary aspect of magic and the wondrous aspect of magic. That's what made, got me interested in the genres that I like and, and got me interested in the hobby. So what about you? What do you think about all this? Do you believe in magic? That was a terrible song. I have to play it in one of my bands. <laughs>